Hi everybody. Welcome to the Misty Mushroom. I'm Julie, and this is our farm. This channel is about my family's journey and adventures into sustainability and homesteading. The name implies, of course, that we have a deep interest in mycology and also working with culinary mushrooms, so there will be a little bit of that. Um, also enjoy medicinal and culinary herbs, so there will be discussions on that. Uh, growing vegetables, raising livestock, right now we have ducks, and everything in between, including crafts, building, and projects that will help improve our lives for the future. Today I wanted to talk to you about stress. I wanted to start out this video series with one of the most important things that I've had to learn throughout our growing experience. We've been here for just three years, and in that time, we have been plotting out exactly what we want to do. We have altered, we have changed, and we've had a few trials and tribulations along the way. So I want to talk to you about stress today, because it's one of the key factors that stops a lot of people, or it is one of the hang-ups. Now, with everything on the farm, you have a lot of information out there. There's books, there's videos, videos of course in many of the channels of people all across the globe that are learning and expanding on their lives. And with that information, you have a lot of different opinions. A lot of things that work for somebody that lives down in Florida may not work for somebody like myself that lives all the way up in, in Northwest Ohio. So you have to take a lot of information from a lot of different sources to produce the most successful results that you can. Lesson number one is to not get overwhelmed. Because of the amount of information out there, and there are people that, that become more critical when they're trying to teach or trying to expand information to others, they are exceedingly critical on the way that they deliver that information. Do not be overwhelmed. Understand that your journey is yours and the things that you learn are always going to help you to move one inch closer to your goal. When you get information, try to start with something small. When you get overwhelmed, it's generally because you're trying to take on 50 different projects at once. Now, for some people, that's how they roll, and that's how they do. But others, if you take on more than two, even more than one project, it can get a little overwhelming. So, start with something small. And expand on that. If, for me, for instance, building an herb garden, I laid out exactly what the plot of land looked like and then I started researching herbs and which ones that I wanted to grow and then also which ones were available for me to grow which ones were available for me to put in the ground up here and protect from high winds up here and then from there how am I going to use these how am I going to store them am I going to dry them, am I going to freeze them, am I going to put them in oil, am I going to make tinctures, all this stuff, that can get overwhelming. One subject. <laughs> so, tackle projects slowly. Write down a lot of your information. Take notes. Make a plan. Make a plan that'll go through the seasons. Project one for me was to pick out herbs like whorehound, hyssop, lavenders, thymes, things that grew well that were, and I chose this year just to grow um, perennials that'll come back year after year for a number of years before they need to be replaced. 
that was my choice this year. And then with that, which ones can I gather? Which ones can I dry? Learning on each of them every single day. Taking on those projects. And then from there, how can they be used medicinally? How can they be stored? So taking one topic and going slow. You don't have to dive in and do everything at once. And if you've got a small garden, small area, what are the ones that you use the most? And a lot of things can be done in containers, and some things can be brought inside, like basil, like rosemary, that don't here grow all year round. So, rule number one, don't be overwhelmed. Rule number two, simplify. Any hobby out there has a wide range of products that you can buy, money to spend, and all they got a label on it is gardening. It's like having a baby. Everything that's labeled baby is now 20 times more expensive. Gardening's the same way. And... A lot of things in the society lead to buying and using and throwing away. And we should be recycling more. We should be promoting more American-made products. And to do that, we need to also reuse and utilize our tools to the fullest degree. Uh, we wanted to save as much money as we could. Um, Simplify. Get tools that are usable for a number of projects. Simplify. Don't go out and spend a lot of money on things like garden borders or um, top-of-the-line hoses. Um, everything that you can possibly find second-hand, get it second-hand. Um, check out, like, Marketplace, check out local antiques, uh, flea markets, stuff like that. Um, don't be afraid to get nitty-gritty dirty. Um, there's a lot of things that we've gotten, like, uh, we got an old axe that was rusted, the handle was, was bad, and my husband rehoned that blade and fixed the handle, and, and he... He coated it and everything. It looks marvelous. It's beautiful. It looks brand new. Um, so think about things that you can fix immediately, not later. Because if you get a bunch of things that need fixed, you're not living simply. You're living more complicated. Get things that you can immediately fix, mend, use. Get things that others are looking to throw away. Things like pallets, some people sell them because of the times that we have. And if you can find them for free, get them. And a lot of people are more than willing to let you have them for free if they know that you're just using them on your property and not reselling them. Um, so talk to your friends, reach out uh, to local businesses, and get those pallets use them. Uh, we made an entire fence out of pallets. We used a bunch of reused wood to make our duck coop. Uh, metal siding that we got from an old barn that was being torn down. We got metal siding that uh, then we had metal siding that was from the barn that was left over on the property when we got here. We used that to build a raised garden bed. We've used a lot of scrap wood and a lot of scrap metal to do what we need to do. Um, my garden is, you'll see in a few shots later on, there's all these big rocks that are around the tree circle and around the herb garden. These were all rocks that were on the property. I got out a shovel and I dug every single one of these up. And... They were all sunken down into the ground. So, look at old uh, foundation pavers. That's what they're often called. 
And uh, a lot of times people are looking to get rid of those because they're heavy. They don't have any use for them. Um, you know, make use of what you can get secondhand to live simply. And also get what is needed when you need it. Uh, you can prep a lot in the future for what you think that you're going to need and then find out that you're never going to use it. Live simply. And with that, recycle. Um, I suppose I could list that as rule number three. Recycle. Everything that you can reuse, do. Um, we're working here at saving things like even um, toilet paper tubes. Um, I'm going to save those and fold in one side and use those to grow seedlings. And so on and so forth. There's a multitude of things, containers, plastic. Um, if you can recycle it and take it to Recycling Center, do that. If you can reuse it, reuse it and keep doing that on even the small things. Uh, we're setting aside as many um, plastic little containers that we can um, for different projects around the farm. Uh, recycling, grass clippings, recycling any branches from your property, anything that you can reuse, do. And especially when it comes to soils, uh, you can spend a lot of money on buying dirt. You can also find people that have free fill dirt. And you can improve that soil with compost and other things for a lot cheaper. Again, living simply. Recycle. As you grow, as you learn new things, you will expand on what you can do. And you will learn new things. Going along with don't be overwhelmed, you don't just start up just doing everything. You expand upon what you have. You slowly see, I can use this for this, or I need more containers. Oh, I can use old milk jugs, and I can cut them open and use them for a container. Uh, different, different small things. Going on from that, money is one of the biggest stress things that we all have. If you utilize simplicity, recycling, and not being overwhelmed, you will save money. Um, little things that I wish that I would known back, um, because I worry about you know reaching out to different things or going into areas that I don't understand or know yet. Um, we're getting ready to expand our duck feed abilities on buying in bulk quantities and mixing our own to save a lot of money uh, versus buying the pre-made stuff at the farm store that costs a lot more expensive. Um, save money. Anything and everything that you can do to save money, do it. Uh, we are buying seeds for growing bushes and small trees or even things like uh, pawpaws, it's more expensive for me to buy seedlings and already started plants. It is a time endeavor though. Pawpaws, for example, have to be protected from the sun. They're used to growing as an understory. I have to take time to save money. And I'm prepared to do that because that is going to save me in the long run. So, money, do not break your bank. It is more enjoyable to grow your own food, especially when it concerns to produce. It is more enjoyable for you to make side projects out of things like herbs, um, lavender satchels, potpourris, and whatnot. And if you happen to give away some of those as gifts, that benefits yourself and those around you and does save you money. Um, a lot of times growing your own food 
because of the time may not seem like it is actually saving you money because if you can buy a bunch of broccoli for some nickels and dimes and the time and water that you're using to grow your own doesn't seem worth it but what you do grow your own will be more nutritious it will last you longer it will not be as empty as many of the other foods that you get so saving money may not always seem like it's right there in your hand but it is there don't spend what you're not going to use cut back on things that are not beneficial for you. Uh, my husband and I are going to actually work at reducing our grocery costs and we're going to really try and scrimp and save a lot. Um, him and I both need to cut back a little bit of inches on our on our waistline and we're going to reduce a lot of the excess and we're going to try and do maybe $300 a month on groceries, which is about $5 a day for the both of us. Well, 10 bucks a day for both of us combined, $5 individually. We'll see how we go with that. Um, so, money, don't be stressed out. Reuse, recycle, and that'll help you out. Start small, start simply. Don't be overwhelmed. These are all things that are often stress-inducing for many, and these are things that will keep you from obtaining your goals. Lastly, failure. One of the biggest reasons why a lot of people get out of doing a hobby or a project or anything is because they are afraid to fail, or they fail and then they don't want to try again. I'm going to be real honest with you. Everybody fails. And that's okay. Part of learning, a part of expanding, is learning that failure happens and you learn from it. You pick yourself up. You realize that was foolish, but now I'm wiser. Certain things that we've learned... Um, I'll give one little example here. Um, I picked up a rue plant, and I put it next to my oregano in the herb garden, right up front, because it's a sun-loving plant. And I was like, all right, yay, I got rue. It's great. And it killed my oregano. I had come to find out rue um, actually has some growth inhibitors that it has and doesn't grow well next to things like oregano. So, I dug it up. I moved it. I actually looked up and saw what does it grow next to? Can it grow underneath a black walnut tree? Which, black walnut trees have a lot of growth inhibitors. Come to find out, yeah, it'll grow under there. And it is just fine. And it'll be excellent choice. So I failed. I lost a plant. But at the same time, I learned more. And I learned about something else that I could put under the black walnut tree that's a usable plant. Versus a lot of them that, you know, aren't the greatest choices. So, I'm out of a plant, but the knowledge that I gained is more than beneficial, and I can always look for another oregano of that type. I still have one that's a hot and spicy, which is good, um, and I'll get another Greek one. No worries. So, you learn. I've learned a lot about placement of plants, a lot about the tenacity of ducks. Ah, you guys have destroyed everything in my garden! Everything! And, and doing things that will help us be more profitable in the future. Uh, learn things about mycology and mushrooms, uh, certain substrates that are better than others, 
and certain things that I was recommended and tried out and failed. And I lost uh, $40 worth of spores of different oyster mushrooms. And that's why I don't have any right now, is because I failed big time. But you know what? I went from what I knew worked to something that I had never done before, and I saw that it was not as beneficial for me. And I'll go about doing different things to get the best results. So, do not be afraid of failure. You may feel foolish for a day, but in the end, you learn something. And you just have to pick up the pieces and go. There's certain things that I've learned with vegetables that I would not have known without trying it out. Everybody learns differently, but most of us learn hands-on. And even if you're more book smart, you could read 20 books all about gardening, and it's not even going to tell you how to garden in your own space. So, research, learn, watch videos, watch lots of people talk about the same topic. Remain open-minded. Don't be critical. Be positive. Be ready to grow and learn with an open mind. And be ready to fail. Because it happens. As humans, we have the tenacity to be able to get past these things and go further. And we can accept their follies and celebrate our triumphs. So I'm here today to tell you that don't be overwhelmed and don't be stressed out. With everything that's going on, there's enough stress in the world. Gardening, growing, raising, living should be the best things of your existence. I want everybody to have a lovely day. I gotta go in and uh, wake up the little one and take care of lunch. <laughs> <laughs>